Welcome to our all new vMix 2025 Masterclass. This is a beginner to pro level live streaming course. This course is going to provide you a complete and practical guide to using vMix for professional live streaming setup. From basic setup to advanced techniques. To establish the basics, we'll talk about what vMix is, how to get it installed, and basically an overview of the interface. Quickly, we can go over to the website, it's www.vmix.com. So you are just going to scroll down, where it says vMix 28 is out, you can download free for 60 days. So it's going to give you access to all the features for free for 60 days. But let's say you want to purchase vMix, let's take a look at some of the purchasing plan. Basically, we have the different lifetime license for vmix so you can either get the $50 per month vmix that supports all the versions or you can get the lifetime license of $60 for basic HD now because I already have vmix 28 installed which is the latest version let's launch it and get started so this is vmix 28 interface this is how you have it two empty inputs and all the different now you would normally not have this typically they look empty so these are categories that are normally empty so vmix actually remembers some of my presets this is how they are supposed to look okay now let's talk a little bit about the interface this is our preview monitor or preview panel right this is our output these here are transitions this is a fade in slider these are overlays which are very very helpful when you want to have your logos and other kinds of overlays and here Again, this is where you add inputs, this is where you record. If you click on this settings button, you can actually change the record settings. Here is also for other external outputs. So let's say you want to send your NDI out, you can actually set that in here. Even HDMI out, you can set them in here. Then this is your stream. An interesting part of this version of vMix is when you click on the stream settings, we now have five. We used to have three, now we have up to five different streaming outputs, which is amazing. So stream you simply click on destination and you can choose any of this facebook but it requires you to sign up here so i prefer to use the custom iotmp server and have the facebook stream url here and then have my unique stream key depending on where i'm streaming from so once i'm done i'll check the quality set the quality to the different quality depending on your internet speed so i'll get it a couple of video feeds that we can use for practice now dragging and dropping is just the easiest. Whatever is here is what is being displayed online or wherever you are sending to. So hitting quick play would make that to display. You can also click on loop. This button here would loop. Okay. So when you click on this button for any input, it sets it on loop. So we can loop this and quick play it. Now typically your input one and two, I like to have that to be the video and the audio. So input one would be our video input, while two, I like that to be the audio because those are the two most important things for any live stream. So how do we add that? You click on add inputs at the bottom left here, go to camera, now you select the camera. Okay, so I don't have any active one now. At the bottom here, you notice you can also do something. You can actually set the number that you want that is almost like asking it to choose the slot it wants to take. Okay, so I'm going to change this to 1. Because there's already something in 1, it's going to shift every other thing forward when I set this to 1. Set it to 1 and you should have your camera. Same with the audio. Come over here, audio input. You can actually set any of your audios and set it to 2. And there you have your audio. So there's going to be a feedback. Now you can disable the audio by clicking on the audio button that disables it. You can click on configure. Now each of these inputs can be configured. Now there's a whole world here that would be another video. You can rename it here to stay organized. You can categorize it here. I prefer to categorize stuff a lot. So you can categorize it here based on the colors. You can create a virtual input. This duplicates it. Gives you a second input for that audio. Just in case you need it for something. So look, you now have another audio input. But that's a virtual one. It's not actually there. You can check the audio settings where you can actually work on the delay. So if you want to fix the delay, usually um, your audio is usually faster than your video. 
when you have synchronization issues so you may want to delay the audio by a hundred milliseconds so 100 is a good number to start with when trying to fix those kind of delay problems in your live stream so that way it's going to slow down the audio to try to match with the video signal now that's the audio now over here if you look down here any audio would fall in here so this is your monitor so this is how you monitor audio you notice how i click on this and drag it so by default it works with whatever your computer has set for headphones that's very important to monitor the audio of what you are streaming now this stopped because it was not set on loop so let's set it on loop let's have things displaying let's look at different transitions quickly this is a fade so look how fade works just like doing a video production but doing it live isn't that amazing let's look at uh cut so cut is just gonna very sharp cut right you know how sharp cut works look at wipe now these i would almost never use but in the case where you're trying to like have like a kind of picture slides it's not even that bad to have the wipe i think cube is something i would almost never use let's see the cube yeah i don't think i'll ever use cube for anything so they actually have a lot of transitions so in case you don't want to use cube you can click on this tiny arrow by the corner here to change what transition is taking that slot so let's say i'm like i, I will never use cube so let's try vertical wipe so vertical wipe is going to take this lot of cube that's very interesting so now we can have vertical wipe notice what i'm doing down here is i, cl I single click and that prepares it on the preview to be able to go live so a single click on that input sets it in the preview monitor then now i can try my vertical wipe and it goes in so interestingly like some of these transitions are literally better than what we have in premiere and all these powerful softwares now let's check out overlays quickly because this is just an overview tutorial let's see what we can have as overlays so we're going to get some pngs in here that can serve as overlays some person is asking me how do you get this transparent um, overlays well you can do that in canva or photoshop all you need to do is export it and set the transparent background so when you set transparent background it's going to export with transparency i have some pictures here let's look at how overlays work in vmix now these are the numbers you use in keying in your overlays so when you click on one for example you have the overlay of that logo which is obviously not supposed to take the entire screen so how do we do that first way which is a uh, very recommended recommended is to set it configure that singular input by clicking on the configure of that input and go to position okay watch how we do that now go down to position and there's so much you can do here you can actually have layers okay and position the layers separately so this is how you layer stack you can literally have up to 40 overlays easy because each of these can carry even more than 40 each of these can carry 10 believe me in vmx you can have unlimited number of overlays i'm not doing the layers now but position is what we are looking at now this will zoom so, so look at this is zooming out and if you want to check out what you are doing while click while working you can just single click on it right so it's showing you now on your preview can you see that that's a good way to work so you can actually preview what you are adjusting zoom out okay so this is going to be a logo so i want to place this in an interesting top corner and voila now imagine it's something you want to scale in a weird way it's like stretch it you can actually stretch that but we don't want to do that so i'm going to reset that again and just take everything back down now notice i'm using this to position i can also use this this is the pan x and pan y there's also a cropping feature where you can actually crop x and crop y and crop all that there's a very hidden trick where you can right click on something and it layers on the preview so notice the the it's yellow or orange instead of green that's because instead of left clicking single left click right i did the right click so the right click will preview it on the left so that's a very interesting way to see things that you do not want to obstruct your production you want to see how will this overlay respond i'm not going to be able to cover too much in this video that's why there's another video where we'll be talking about more stuff I hope you found this particular video helpful in getting started with vmix understanding the overlays and the inputs and the transitions and how they work so it's a pretty interesting thing now each week we'll be dropping a full-length video tutorial covering various topics across the board of live streaming and video production we also encourage community interactions so there will be a telegram channel where you can ask questions get resources so the link to the telegram channel will be in the description presets media files images videos and whatever we are going to be using in these lessons we will let those files be available for free in that telegram channel it's going to be blast creative academy vmix masterclass channel Thank you very much for watching. My name is Igbino Salasaretin Isaac. 
and I am the creative art director right here at Blast Creative Studios. And until next time, I'll see you again.